Hi, in this episode of Gray Lightning, we're going to talk about how to use a laser cutter to make game tokens for your favorite tabletop games. Hi, welcome to another making episode of Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And I've decided I want to try to alternate making episodes with playing episodes, but this episode today is kind of a crossover episode because it's about making things that you use when you play games, and that's game tokens for tabletop games. So these in front of me are ones that I made for one of my favorite games, Netrunner. Uh, they're cut on a laser cutter. And I want to talk about how you can design your own original tokens, but inspired by the tokens that came with the game, uh, different materials you can use, and what worked for me and what didn't work. One of the first things I did is I went and looked for a free illustration online of high-tech images, and I found this one. And I'm just going to grab this section of it and modify it for my own purposes. I pull it into a drawing that I've created that is the size of the token I want to make. And then I just start selecting elements of the illustration and deleting them because I, I want it to be a simpler image than the one that I started with. Then I select all and I make the fill transparent and I make the lines blue because that's the engraving color for my laser cutter. Sometimes I find that the size of the illustration that I've created is a little too small for what I want to do and then you can just go to edit artboards and drag the edges out like this to make it the size you want to work with. I've placed a photo of an actual game token in the drawing to use as a reference and I've grabbed the circle shape and by just clicking on the screen I can enter the actual dimensions that I want for that circle. Another useful way to use the circle or any shape is to hold the Alt key and that lets you draw out from the center and that's easier to do when you're trying to copy an image that's used as a reference. I use the alignment tools a lot. You just select the shapes that you want to align and use these alignment tools to make sure that you keep them, uh, in this case, in concentric circles around the center. Another very useful tool is the pen tool because you can just take it and click on the places, the vertices you want and it creates a shape and uh, then you can select that shape. I have to make it blue because I want this engraved, not cut. But once it's selected, you can copy it and paste it. You can copy it and rotate it and put that in place and then copy that and paste that down in the other corner as well. I want to put a five in the center and I've shown in prior episodes how you have to change text by going to type create outline and then change the fill to transparent, change the line to the color you want. And I actually want this cut out of the center so I'm making it red. Always make sure you save your drawing in a format that your laser cutter can use. Mine uses CS6. And here's another handy tool you should check out. It's called the Pathfinder and it allows you to select shapes and combine them in interesting ways. So now you have a drawing for a single token but you really want to make a lot of them. So you go to the multiples option on the laser cutter and you say how many rows and how many columns you want. You can even control the, the distance between each of them and it creates a matrix of your tokens. You can see this sheet has had a lot of tokens cut out of it and here we're cutting the four that I just uh, instructed the machine to create. When they come out they look like this. They still have the paper on the back. You leave that on to keep the the, the back from getting burned. That paper is hard to remove. I do it by dropping them in a jar of simple green and leaving them overnight and then the paper comes right off. So I have elected uh, after much experimentation to do rear engraving. It shows up better than uh, engraving on the top and I'll show that in a second. This is transparent acrylic. I also use fluorescent acrylics for my tokens. Sometimes you refine a design after you've cut it. I learned that the one on the left had the bars too close together so I spread them apart and recut it. And I made many, many different versions of these turn tokens that are designed to be turned over as you take a portion of your turn. 
And I decided I wanted to engrave these on the top so that when I flipped them over, they were smooth. I have a sample on the left where I've engraved on the bottom, and you can see it is a little bit brighter and easier to see. But I still wanted that smooth back, so I opted to engrave these on the top. Another thing I experimented with is using paint. I learned that you could put acrylic paint into the grooves of the engraving and then let it mostly dry and then rub off the excess and it would stay in the grooves. But it was a lot of work and it's, it caught in all the open holes and it wasn't very reliable in the way it turned out. Sometimes it looked good, sometimes it didn't. So I opted to go with just the rear engraving. It gives you good visibility and it's much more consistent and less work. Another thing I experimented with is laminate, and this is acrylic that has multiple layers of different colors of acrylic in it. This particular one is black with a layer of brushed gold, and I thought it might make a, for really good tokens, and I got some good definition in the lines, but I got burn marks from the laser, and I didn't like the thinness of the material. The laminate is a sixteenth of an inch quite thin. The most common acrylic sheets you find are an eighth of an inch, and they're pretty good, but I don't like them as much as the three sixteenths of an inch, which is what I use for all of my tokens, except for my click markers, which I do in a quarter inch acrylic, and that's actually a waste product from the token boxes that I'll show in my next video. The best solution for me then was the transparent and the fluorescent 3 16 inch acrylic. It shows up well on most colors and of course the clear for the click tokens. In my next making video I'll talk about making a token box for the tokens and I have a lot of other laser cutter projects so if you're interested please subscribe.